Hey guys! In today's video, I'll be showing some clips of the studying that I did over the past week. So to begin with, in what's showing on the screen right now, I'm doing my math homework on Tuesday evening. I originally wanted to record all of the studying and schoolwork that I did over one whole week to show you guys the amount of schoolwork and the type of schoolwork that I typically do in a week, but it didn't really work out for a variety of reasons, so instead I'll just be showing you the clips that I was able to record and giving you some more information about what's going on and why certain things are happening. That was a kind of weird and vague explanation, but you can basically expect the same kind of thing as my normal study with me videos. As I mentioned earlier, right now you're seeing me work on a math homework assignment. And the reason that it sped up so much is because I spent a very long time on it. This section was about work, which is a pretty difficult topic. And I also missed the lecture because I went to cross country league finals on Monday instead of being in class. So needless to say, I struggled quite a bit and I had to refer to those answers on that post-it note a lot to guide me in the right direction. Now moving on, I'm adding some highlighting and boxes to my notes from my math notes that were taken this day in class. And then I'm doing some more math practice questions from a previous chapter to practice, obviously. If you've watched my videos for a while, you probably already know this, but the way I schedule when to study certain chapters is based on the Curve of Forgetting, which is a system and printable that I will have linked in the description if you'd like more information. I personally think that it's pretty helpful. I've been using it since freshman year, and I find it especially useful in math, since in math all the concepts build off of each other in some ways, so I need to make sure I remember everything from the previous units as we're moving along and learning new things. If you're wondering about the supplies I'm using, they'll always be linked in the description. Right now, I'm using a whiteboard notebook and an ultra-fine expo marker. I like to do my practice math questions on a whiteboard to conserve paper since I never really refer back to them, so I don't need them permanently preserved, instead I can just erase them and not waste as much resources. And now moving on, I am attempting to study for a quiz on The Crucible, which is the play we're reading in English, by flipping through the annotations I made, but I honestly don't really know how to study for English, so if you have tips please leave them in the comments, it would be very greatly appreciated. Continuing on, now I am studying for AP US History by doing some multiple choice practice questions on albert.io. It's a website with multiple choice practice and answer explanations from previous AP exams, officially from the College Board. It does cost money to access all of the questions, but I find it a pretty helpful resource and it's worth the investment, in my opinion, more than any other prep books that I've tried. Now I'm doing some notes for a push, which are from my AP US History textbook, and the reason that I take notes from the textbook is because it is an assignment from my teacher. The way my history class is structured is we get a lot of our historical details and background knowledge and everything from reading the textbook, and activities and lectures in class are meant to point out certain important details and help go over the more important concepts. If you'd like some tips about how to take history notes, especially for a push, I will link some videos in the top right card that will explain more. So first of all, I have a video called How to Take History Notes, which is about how to take history notes, obviously, and it's based off of what I did when I took AP European History last year. My process for A push is pretty similar, except I changed the way that the notes are laid out. Instead of having two columns with a margin for the titles and other commentary type stuff, I just use a header and then the bullet points underneath that header. I also changed the way that I format the headers. So the top is the calligraphy header, and that's the title of the chapter. 
Then I have the title for each section in a longer highlighter bar thing that extends across the whole page. And then the title for each subheading within each section is regular writing with regular highlighting. If you're wondering what the blue thing underneath my paper is, that's a writing board and I use that to make the surface of my table more comfortable to write on in a pen and I use it for when I'm writing on the back side of a piece of paper. I don't want to press really hard and make the ink or pencil transfer over onto my white table since it gets dirty so easily. By the way, this set of notes that I did was split between Tuesday and Wednesday, which was why there was a cut in the middle of this note-taking session where I moved the textbook. That was a completely different day, in fact. Also, I'm really sorry about how often the top of my head and my glasses showed up in this clip. I don't know why, but this day I just really felt like leaning over really far and cutting my head into the shot. I don't know if any of you guys noticed, but I got a new pen body recently. This is the Uni Jetstream Alpha Gel body, and I put the Pentel Energel refill into it. Usually I use the Zebra Sarasa, as you might know, but I am trying out this one because I have the Uni Alpha Gel Mechanical Pencil, and I really like how squishy the grip is. Currently, I'm not liking this pen as much. Since I'm not using the correct refill in it, I'm using the Pentel Energel, which mostly fits but is very slightly too small, so there's a slight rattly, shifty feeling that I don't enjoy. Also, the grip is not quite as soft as the mechanical pencil, and the texture doesn't feel as nice. It feels almost sticky. If you guys have used this pen before, let me know if that improves with use or if it's just not quite as good as the mechanical pencil grip. I'm honestly not 100% sure whether I like this or not. I'm going to keep using it to see if I can make it work for me and grow to like it. But right now, I definitely wouldn't recommend you to spend your money on it since it is pretty expensive. I remember last year, I got a comment or two asking why I always wear my winter coat inside, and I'm from California so I don't really have a concept of a winter coat. I just have this puffy down jacket in my house and I never wear it outside of the house since it is kind of ugly, but inside it's so warm and it's not even cold in my house, I just always feel cold for no reason, so that's the reason I'm wearing this jacket, if you really cared that much to know. Now moving on, I am making some flashcards for French, and I'm using the software Anki, which is a spaced repetition software. I don't know the exact science behind it, but it helps me do flashcards and remember vocab, so it works great. Anyways. The way I do the flashcards is I have the image as the prompt, and then I need to recall the French word. The reason I'm using an image instead of just the English word is so that I can associate the concept of the thing with the French verb, rather than thinking of the English word and the French word and then needing to translate between them. And then I'm just reviewing those flashcards. And now, on a different day, I believe this is Thursday, I'm reviewing some more multiple choice questions for APUSH since we have a quiz on the next day and I really wanted to review it. This chapter seemed to be a fat struggle for me, as you can see by the accuracy bar, but that's okay because improvement is good and good to learn from your mistakes and all that. If you were wondering why my computer screen is orange tinted, that's because I use the app Flux, which blocks blue light after sunset, which will help me go to sleep more easily. I know it doesn't look like it's after sunset since the lighting is so bright in my filming desk area, and if you'd like to see how I set up the lighting for these videos and how I set up my camera to get the downwards filming angle, I will link my behind the scenes of a study with me video video, behind the scenes video about study with me videos in the top right card right now. The last three minutes of this video are of me taking an entire chapter of A Push Notes. This happened on Saturday evening. 
I didn't really film much over the weekend since I was super busy and had to study during whichever small bits of time were available, so this included me on the car or me at a random time period when I didn't really want to take out my camera and just film 10 minutes of work. The only time I filmed was for this set of notes because I feel like reading a chapter of notes is a thing that you have to do in a really long focused block of time and continuously. It doesn't have to be continuous I suppose, I don't do continuous all the time, but I try my best to take all of my really intense information heavy notes in a pretty continuous focused block. One reason I find this helpful is because I get into a kind of flow state where I don't even need to take breaks for a Pomodoro timer or anything. Also if I do it all at once, I can remember everything that I previously read in the chapter, which is all from the same time period and are all related to each other. And since I can recall pretty much everything within the chapter, I can more easily make connections between the things that are happening in the chapter, which in turn will help me remember everything better for a long-term memory way. Did that make any sense? I hope it did. Also, I know you can't see this, but while I'm recording the voiceover, I make a lot of hand gestures, and they make sense in my gestures, but I don't know if they make sense in the speech. Hopefully this verbose and somewhat related to the video tangent helped you in some way. I personally do think it helps to focus for a long period of time when you're taking notes, but obviously you don't have to do this, and if you don't have time, the best time to study is whenever you do have time. Don't worry too much about doing things in the best, optimally productive way. It's better to just get it done even if it's not to the 100% perfect method, because 98 or 95% is still much better than 0% or 50%. I usually finish off my A push notes by copying down the timeline that is in the chapter summary of the textbook. This one is of the Civil War, so it's pretty long and detailed with dates and everything. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more Study With Me videos, I will link them on screen and in the description. I also upload new videos every Friday, and you can see pictures of my notes on my Tumblr and Instagram, which are at StudyQuill. See you next time!